Oops. Psalm 119. And uh, in a new month, the month of June, we have a new focus for this month. Last month, we were, we were looking at the subject of revival in our homes. And this month, we are going to begin by looking at Psalm 119, verses 25 to 32. Psalm 119, verse 25 to 32. Psalm 119, beginning in verse 25. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy truth, thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Let's pray. Lord, as we open the word of God this morning, Lord, we pray that you would be glorified by our responses to your word. Lord, we thank you for the Bible. We thank you for your truth, your precepts, your statutes, thy word. Lord, we thank you for this precious chapter in the book of Psalms. Lord, use your word this morning to revive us again so that we may be a people that glorifies you and that, Lord, by faith, we are able to run the way of thy commandments. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Well, an unknown preacher once said that there are three kinds of people in the world today. Those who are afraid. Secondly, there are those who don't know enough to be afraid. And thirdly, there are those who know their Bible. And God's Word is the reason why we as Christians can be 100% sure of a home in heaven and why we can be confident in our faith and have a living relationship with our God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, our subject for this year so far has been the subject of revival. And the Word of God, as we will see this morning, is also essential to revival. This month, the theme we will be looking at will be Revive My Love for Thy Word. Revive My Love for Thy Word. And today we're going to learn how revival comes by the Word of God. Now we've turned to the longest psalm in the Bible. Whenever we read a psalm a day, my children say, what are we going to do, Dad, when we get to Psalm 119? Well, there are different portions in this psalm, and uh, it would be a, a great day if we read through it all in one go. But uh, Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible, and there is a theme throughout this whole psalm, isn't there? And the theme is the vital ministry of the Word of God in our lives. It's all about the Word of God. Now, the psalm does not state who the author is, but it is believed to be King David because of the style of how it's written and the subjects that have been written about it. In verse number 25, by way of introduction, notice what the psalmist wrote, My soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken thou me, according 
to thy word. Now here we can see that David was suffering at the hand of his enemies. How do we know? Well, notice verse 23. Princes also did sit and speak against me. You see, they were slandering David's name. Verse number 69. Notice there. The proud have forged a lie against me. They were lying about David. Those are his enemies. Verse number 95. Notice verse 95. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me. Would you agree that David was in trouble? David certainly had his enemies. And David described his condition as his soul cleaving unto the dust. You remember what the Jews did in David's day when they were mourning, when they were sorrowing. What did they do? They put on sackcloth. And then they cast ashes upon their head as a visible sign of their inward grief and sorrow. You see, David was overwhelmed in verse 25. He could not get any lower. But what I want us to be careful to notice is that David didn't ask God to protect him. Surely he needed God's protection. But instead he asked God to do what? In verse 25. To quicken him. And yes, that is right. The word quicken is the same word in our Bibles as the word revive. It means to recover. It means to repair. It means to restore one to wholeness of life. And refers to our spiritual life. Can you see that David's trials were having an effect on his relationship with God? They were having an impact on his spiritual condition. Now, that's the same with you and I today. Our trials impact our spiritual lives. David was overwhelmed. Maybe you've been overwhelmed before. Maybe you are overwhelmed this morning. Notice David didn't ask God to take his problems away. David didn't even ask for the revival of his body. But what he asked the Lord for was the quickening, the revival of his soul. He needed spiritual revival. Now, church family, no matter who we are this morning, we all need revival. If we were to be honest, each of us could say there's one area of more or more in our lives where we all cleave unto the dust, where we are all stuck spiritually somewhere in our lives. Why is it that our Christian lives so often are barren and dry, and empty. And so often there is no evidence of the supernatural power of God upon our lives. Why is that? Why is it so often our lives are so often evident by the fears that we fear, and the worries that consume us, the anxieties, the sin of unbelief in our souls towards God, We are overwhelmed so often when we ought to be more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Why is that? Well, we do have problems. We all have problems. If we live godly in Christ Jesus, we shall suffer persecution. We will have trials. But the heart of our problem is not the issue this morning. The problems in our lives. The heart of our problem are not the trials that we face, but our relationship with God. The heart of the problem is the is a problem of the heart, our spiritual hearts, and that's why we need revive us. Uh, That's why we need revival, and only God can revive us. Notice He says in verse twenty-five, "Quicken thou me." David is talking to the Lord. Only God can do the supernatural. Christian, only God can do what we cannot do. Isn't that right? Only God can bring us back from a place of hardness of heart, of unbelief, of fear, of cleaving unto the dust, back to a place of fruitfulness through His work of revival. How will God do that? Verse 25, look look once more. David says, quicken thou me according unto thy, say it, word. Revival will come through the instrument of the word of God. That's why this month, 
We need to be careful to ask the Lord to revive our love for his word. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. Believe it or not, nine times David prayed in Psalm 119 for God to revive him. And he used the word quicken in, in, uh, in connection with the word of God. For example, look at verse number 50. Psalm 119 and verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Christian, are you afflicted this morning? Do you need comfort this morning? I don't know about you, but what I look to is a change of circumstances. Hey, if I can get out of this, then finally I'll be comfortable. I'm not comfortable right now with this Lord. Please take this away. And the psalmist said, this is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word hath quickened me. You see, it's the word of God that can pour fresh life into our souls. The word of God is able to quicken, to recover us, to repair what is broken, to restore what has been neglected, to bring us back to fullness of spiritual life. The divinely inspired word of God. Have a look in Jeremiah chapter 23. Perhaps for some of you, this is one of your favorite verses. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. Jeremiah chapter number 23, verse 29. The Bible says, Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? The word of God is powerful. The fire of the word of God purifies our lives. The hammer of the word of God can break the hardened heart. It can break up the fallow ground. The hardened layer on the ground or on our hearts, if you will, that has become hardened over years of sin or over years of neglect or over areas in our life that we have been blinded to. Why are we blinded to certain areas of our life and sin in our lives that we cannot see? Well, it was the same with David and Bathsheba. Why was he blinded to the greatness of his sin? He was blinded to it because it was his own. That's why. But the word of God is so powerful that it can break up that fallow ground, soften up the heart so he can rain down his showers of blessing upon the believer desiring to be revived. The word of God. As it's often been said, there will never be and there never has been a heaven sent revival in a person, in a nation or in a church without a return to a love and obedience of the word of God. That's what we see in the Bible. Christian, what is your relationship with the word of God? Do you want to be revived? Do you want God to fill your life with spiritual power, to bring you to the fullness of what he desires you to be as a Christian? Do you desire to be fruitful? In fact, that's why he's left us here. That you should bring forth much fruit. Oh no, we're in trouble. Much fruit, the Lord said. Not just a little fruit here or there. Not just every 10 years or so when we come to church and we pray, and we seek His face. No, daily, the Lord desires us to be fruitful for Him. And so often we fall short of it, don't we? So we need revival. How will revival come? Christian, it will come via the Word of God. And if this book is open in our hands this morning, but it goes back on the shelf for the rest of the week, we can kiss revival goodbye. Amen. We can forget about revival. Because revival will come by the word of God. One of my favorite preachers says we need to get back to the book. Stay in the book. That's his saying. Some of you might know who he is. Why? 
because the Word of God is so essential to our lives. So this morning we are going to look at this subject of revival and the Word of God. Revive my love for thy Word, O Lord, as we look at Psalm 119 and verses 25 to 32. Notice in verse number 26, David says, I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Psalm 119, verse 26. Notice David's openness before the Lord. I have declared my ways. Now remember, his soul is cleaving to the dust. David is down, down, down. Isn't that right? His enemies are against him. So often in the Psalms, we read of the horror that overwhelms David because of, his, of the wickedness of his enemies. Isn't that right? Yeah. And he's not ashamed to be open with God. He's not ashamed to uh, openly confess his faults, his, his need before the Lord. He is not hiding his ways from the Lord. He's honest about his errors and about his faults. His ways, he knows, are not God's ways. And he confesses them to the Lord in verse 26. I have declared my ways and thou heardest me. Christian, how does revival come by the word of God? Well, the word of God reveals our sins. And revival will come when you and I confess our sins to the Lord. When was the last time that you declared your ways to the Lord? I have declared my ways and thou heardest me. You see, you see sin hinders revival. That's what's between, uh, sin is what is between you, you and I and God. It is sin. Sin is what hinders revival. On Wednesday night, we're going through a series on knowing God. Let me encourage you, if you're not here on Wednesday night, uh, you would do well to come, to come to pray and to learn together how we can know God more. Why? Because your view of God, everything you believe about God will determine your future in this world and in the world to come. Your view of God right now will determine how you will live this year. And if our view of God is not right, we're in trouble. We've learned so far that so often we fall into the sin of unbelief. And we take it so lightly. The sin of unbelief. When we don't believe what God says is true. When we think of Him other than what He says of Himself in His Word. When we think that God doesn't love us. That He's abandoned us. Or, or, or he's trying to destroy us. Or we think ill towards God. And we fall into the sin of unbelief. That is the greatest high-handed insult toward our holy God. When we don't trust him. When we become fearful. And when we worry. When we become angry. We are saying to God that he is not good. That he is not trustworthy. We call him a liar. We make him to be out just like sinful man. And we don't realize the gravity of our unbelief. It's sin that keeps us down in the dust. It's sin that stands in the way of revival. But as you might remember in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 14, uh, the great Revival verse there in that wonderful book says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. That's when revival will take place. Then will I forgive their sins and then will I heal their land. But how can that happen? How can we turn from the sins that we do not even know may very well be there? I've got the same problem. Because they are my own sins. And the fearful thing is so often I do not see them. That's why I often say it's not good for a man to be alone. Amen? A help meet for him is good. Now, we preached on the home last month. I won't go there now. But... What can we do as believers? Well, revival will come when we confess our sins to the Lord. 
How will we know what sins are there? I think you know the point. The Word of God is what will bring us to the place of declaring our ways before Him. When we go to a doctor, we tell the doctor how we feel. We give him a report. We tell him what's wrong. And the doctor will examine us. And then he will tell us the problem. And then he desires to give us the solution. Physically speaking, spiritually speaking, you and I can only know the true condition of our hearts when we allow the Word of God to examine us. We cannot know it on our own. That's why revival only comes via the Word of God. Have a look in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, please. Thank you for turning there. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Verse 12 tells us why God's Word is essential to revival. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Let's say this verse aloud together, shall we? Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12 on 2. 1, 2. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Firstly, the word of God is quick. The word quick means alive. It is living. What we have in our hands is nothing less than the living, breathing, divinely inspired, eternally preserved word of God. That's why we need the word of God. That's why we need to be revived for our love for his word, because his word is alive. We are alive. I hope you're alive this morning. Amen. But don't forget the word of God is alive. This is no ordinary book, Christian. This is not another book that should just sit on the shelf with the rest of your other books. Isn't that right? This is a living book and it needs to be rested in your living hands. The word of God, secondly, is powerful. Verse number 12 says, why? Well, one reason the Holy Spirit of God takes the sword of the word of God and performs spiritual surgery in our hearts, operating on our spiritual lives every time we read or we hear the word of God. It is powerful. You might say, I don't want God to cut my heart. I don't like to hear about my true spiritual condition. It doesn't feel good for God to show me who I really am. But remember, God does need to cut deep. He must in order to operate in the places that he needs to. Not in order to wound, but in order to heal. That's why he cuts. That's why the word of God must be a part of our life in order to bring us back to the fullness of life. Thirdly, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Here is the picture that God seeks to impress upon us, a sword that is able to cut precisely and to go deeper than what we can see, down to the very hidden depths of the soul, the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, where there is nothing hidden to the searching power of the word of God. Of God. And lastly, in verse 12, this is where the word of God is said to discern the thoughts and intents of the hearts. The word discern or discerner means to examine or judge the heart. Now, you and I can't really see what's in our hearts ourselves, and neither can we see what's in each other's hearts, to be honest. But there is a way that we can know what must be confessed, what is in the way of revival, the Word of God will reveal it. Christian, revival will come when we confess our sins, when we declare our ways. But when was the last time you allowed God's Word to search your heart, to reveal to you 
what is there. Only through the word of God can we see our sins before the Lord. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 20, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. I remember when I was up to, up to the point when I was 25 years old, I thought I was a pretty good person. I thought, you know, if I died, I'd probably go to heaven. I'd done some good things in my life, and I certainly hadn't done some very, very bad things. I'd never killed anyone, and, you know, I helped old ladies across the street if I saw them in need. And people would tell me that I'm a good person. Oftentimes, I felt good about myself. I didn't really worry where I was going to go when I died, except when I opened up this book. Dad had one at home. He was reading it often. And then when I went home to Canberra and saw him reading it, sometimes I opened it up, but I got scared. I got scared because I read about what Jesus said. He speaks more about hell than he does about heaven. He speaks about those who are going there. And the book of the Revelation tells us, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone. That's when I closed the Bible. I didn't want to hear any more of it because I wanted to think I was a good person. Well, I couldn't stay away from God. Friends, no one can run from God. And I'm thankful for God's mercy in bringing me to a church like this where I could hear more about what God says. And that's when I realized that I was a sinner. Yes, I may have looked good in front of others. And if I compared myself to someone else, I may have felt good about myself. But if I stood next to the Lord Jesus Christ, then I was in big trouble. That's exactly right. Then we are all in trouble. For God is holy and we are corrupt. God is glorious and we have fallen short of His glory. We are dead in our sins and trespasses, my friend. And we can only know that via the Word of God. It's easy to think that you're okay until you open the Bible. But when you do, there ought to be a fear of God. There ought to be a godly fear realizing that we deserve the holy judgment and wrath upon our sins because our sins are so great in His sight. He doesn't just see what we do, He sees our thoughts. But the Bible tells us that in His glory, God so loved the world that He left His glory and He gave His only begotten Son who died on the cross, who shed His blood for our sins, who rose again from the dead, so so that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. My friend, if you're sitting here this morning, has there ever been a time that you saw yourself as a sinner in the sight of a holy God, and you saw Jesus Christ as the Savior who died for you? and you repented of your sins, and you called upon the Lord to save you and to forgive you once and for all. Has there been a time? Hey, salvation can never happen outside of the Word of God. You need to see yourself as a sinner first. And then you need by faith to see the Savior and what He's done for you, and then call upon His name. Trust His promise of salvation and experience the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Have you trusted Him as Savior? If you haven't, let me encourage you to do that today. Don't close this book when you get home and forget about it for the rest of the week. This is the day of salvation. If you are a Christian, listen, are you letting God deal with your sins, not your sin debt, which has been paid for, but your daily sins, are you letting Him deal with those in the Word of God? Are you allowing Him to do that? Well, we need to humble ourselves, don't we? We need to allow the searching of the Scripture to show us our thoughts, our deeds. He wants to revive us. That's why the psalmist said, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? The answer is obvious. Yes, God says, I want to revive you. I desire to quicken you. 
I want to bring you out of the dust. But it has to come by the word of God. Revival will come when we confess our sins by the word of God. Revival will come, secondly, when we see our need. Have a look back in Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Notice verse 27. David reveals a number of needs that he has. He asked God to quicken him, but here are some needs. Revival will come when we see our need. First of all, notice verse 27. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Perhaps David wasn't talking about God as much as he used to. Maybe he used to sing a bit more about the Lord. Maybe right now when he was cleaving to the dust, he didn't really feel like praising God. Does that sound familiar? Maybe he didn't really feel like telling people about the Savior. I know that's how I feel when I'm down in the dust. And yet notice what David said. He admitted that when he would be filled with the understanding of the Word of God and God's ways, only then would he be able to tell others about God's wondrous works. Revival will come when we see the greatness of our need. Our need to witness Christian is a great need in our day. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 20, let me read it for you. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. We are ambassadors. We serve a sovereign God who has left us here to represent Him on the earth and on His behalf we are to plead with this world to repent and turn to Christ. And yet so often we're down in the dust. We're cleaving to the dust. We're stuck. How can we tell the world of a Savior who we are not close to? When we've lost sight of who He is, when we've lost sight of the greatness of His holiness. You know, we dare not preach the gospel if we've lost sight of His holiness. Amen. We'll water the gospel down and it won't be the true gospel. We dare not preach the gospel if we've lost sight of the richness of His grace. Amen? Amen. We dare not preach the gospel if we are not filled with the Spirit of God. And living by faith, willing to take the slander, knowing that God is still working in the heart of that slanderer after he sees the simple name on the front of that track which he never took. Amen? We dare not do that if we're not living by faith. Why aren't we the witness we, witnesses we ought to be? Why don't we so often tell people of the wondrous grace of Jesus that we sang of this morning. You know, it is easier to sing than it is to, to witness. We're together. We're singing. I trust we are saved. But when we're out there alone, it's a different story. Why are we dried up inside? Why do we appear lifeless spiritually? Well, we need revival. Back to the same subject, we need God to revive us. And revival will come when we see the greatness of our need. We need to declare His wondrous works to others. And David knew that when he understood the way of God's precepts, then he will preach the Word of God. He will declare who God is to others. He will desire to sing each day to the Lord. His life will be a light in a dark place. How does that happen? That kind of revival, that kind of quickening. It comes by you and I spending time in the Word of God. Uh, at the moment, we're enjoying reading through the book of Isaiah with our kids. And my, you come to chapter 11 and you read the branch that came out of Jesse. The root, amen, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you read of His glorious kingdom on earth to come. The 1,000 year reign of Christ where the lion will lie down with the lamb, where all nations will come unto him, 
where there will be a highway leading to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, when He will be the desire of nations, when the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. My, that's going to quicken you, amen. That's going to shake you up a bit. The future to come, the glorious millennium. I don't know about you, but my maths is pretty simple. If I live to the, to the uh, three score and ten that the Bible says, that's nothing compared to 1,000 years. Amen. Amen. And when we explore the depths of the richness of God's word and the promises he has in store for us, that's just one aspect, by the way that God will use to fill our hearts with joy and confidence to go out into this lost world and preach the gospel before it's too late. Amen? Revival will come when we see our need to be a witness. Back in Psalm 119, verse 28, we need to see our need for strength also. Verse 28, my soul melteth for heaviness. David was honest with God. He didn't have the strength in him to revive himself, can you see? My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto, say it, thy word. You see, it's God's word that will give you and I strength that we do not have. David needed strength. His grief was so great, he felt like he was wasting away. You felt like that before, haven't you? I know that I have. I'm wasting away, Lord. I'm grieving. My soul melteth for heaviness. What graphically descriptive words of what we find so hard to put into words. This is the word of God. We do melt for heaviness. We do become overwhelmed. We do cleave unto the dust. And we too, like David, are in a spiritual battle. We are in a battle for souls. Amen. We are in a battle for the glory of Christ in this world. And the battle is too fierce and the enemy is too great, Christian, to fight in our own strength. We need God. I need God's strength each day. I need God's strength each hour. So what do we do when we are melting for heaviness? Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. When was the last time we were overwhelmed and we did this? Amen? That's not the natural thing to do. I find there's a resistance within me saying, do something else. Switch on the TV. Go do some work. Keep yourself busy. Keep your mind off it. Could be just a, you know, a a practical thing. Hope that things will get better somehow. And here within our very hands is the means of revival. The Word of God. And as we turn to the Word of God, what do we find? Well, there is God calling us, inviting us to come boldly before the very throne of grace. Amen? That we may find grace to help and mercy. Amen? In a time of need. And when we're in a time of need, what do we need? We need the Word of God. We need the promises of the word, to, word of God to remind us, hang on a second, I'm not left without help. In fact, God has already given me His grace. I need to live in His grace each day and I so often forget about it. Lord, forgive me for my unbelief. We need God's Word to quicken us, Christian. We need to see our need for strength, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How do we do that? You can't do it without the Word of God. You can't grow in knowledge of who he is. We can't grow in knowledge of what the word grace really means. And the richness of his grace, the depths of his grace. Do we even understand what his supernatural work in our life ought to be like if this book is closed? All we know is what we hear today, perhaps. Today is just a little uh, appetizer for the rest of the week. I hope you've come to understand that by now. No one's life changes because of one message. It may lead to a step that leads to other steps to change. I do understand that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here right now. But one message doesn't change your life. 
You need to continue along that path throughout the rest, the rest of the week. The Word of God reveals our need for strength and we must turn to Him and claim His promises to be strengthened each day. Let's continue on. We will be revived when we see our need. In verse 29, for victory. Remove, thy, remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. Was David speaking about the lies of others? Possibly. Or was he speaking about his own problems? His own sinful habits? Remove from me the way of lying. It seems very personal because David is speaking of himself in the rest of the verses. Perhaps David had some sinful habits that needed to be overcome. We know that David did struggle in this area of lying. Do you remember when he fled from Jerusalem and he feigned himself a madman? Have you ever read that and thought, what are you doing, David? He feigned himself a madman before uh, the Philistines and drooled and dribbled to pretend so we could get into their land. Remember when he went to, the, to get the sword of Goliath and he lied. Do you remember David and Bathsheba? Here he's honest with the Lord. Remove from me the way of lying. Once again, David called upon God to do what? To grant me thy law graciously to teach him the understanding of the law, the word of God, to keep him from that sinful habit. It is the word of God that will keep us from sin. All right, stay with me. Verse number nine. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. It's good to get rid of stuff. It's good to replace junk. Amen. It's good to put temptation away, but nothing will replace you and I putting the word of God down into our hearts. Notice verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Revival will come when we see our need for victory. Oh Lord, I'm not overcoming this sin. Lord, I've tried to stop it. Lord, I've tried to flee from it. And that's good. But listen, without the word of God, we cannot overcome it. The Word of God is essential to experiencing victory over, our, over the strongholds of sin in our lives. Why? Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We can't defeat those sin habits spirit, as, uh, physically, only spiritually. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. That sounds like revival to me. Mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The word of God will lead us to victory by showing us the way of victory. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. We all have some strongholds in our life, yes or no? Yes, we do. We all have some areas that have been built up like a fortress. That's what a stronghold is. One temptation at a time, we've said yes to it, and there's a fortress. There's a stronghold, and it's very strong. We can't bring it down. We dare not even try in our own strength. When we do, we add more bricks to it. We're in trouble. What do we do? Mighty through God, he says, to the pulling down the decimation of those strongholds. We can only know that by the Word of God. We can only pray a prayer like that by knowledge of the Word of God. Amen. We can only experience victory by God answering the prayer like David did, grant me thy law graciously. The point being is this. If we do not allow God to speak to our hearts through His Word, we will never experience revival. Do you see the need this morning? Our need to be a witness, our need uh, 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 to, to have strength, our, our need to have experienced victory in our lives. We need the word of God. Only then will revival come. 
when we confess our sins, when we see our need. And lastly, notice the last two verses. Excuse me, the last three verses. Psalm 119. Revival will come when we commit our ways to God. The psalmist says in verse 30, I have chosen the way of thy truth, of truth, excuse me. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. In conclusion, notice David made a choice. Can you see that? David is making a choice here. At the beginning, he says to the Lord, Quicken thou me, O Lord, according to thy word. But now David is making a choice. What's he going to do? To obey the word of God. David is making a commitment to turn back to God. How? By choosing the way of truth. By laying God's judgments before him. What is he going to do? He's going to study the word of God. He's going to learn more about the Lord from his word. He's going to obey the word of God. He's going to spend time in it. And by doing so, by sticking unto God's word, his testimonies, he knows that he will no longer be cleaving in the dust and being ashamed. He knows that is true. He knows that he will not be put to shame when he sticks to God's testimonies. Notice lastly, verse 32. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. David was fallen down in the dust and now he has hope of running forwards in the way of truth. I will run, no longer cleaving to the dust, when thou shalt enlarge My heart. Only God can do that kind of miracle in our hearts to quicken us, to bring us up out of the cloud of dust that we kick up around ourselves because of our own choices. Amen? That's where David was. But now he's about to run. Why? Because he made a choice to commit his ways to the word of God. Yes, it is only God who could revive David, but it was David's responsibility to prepare his heart for revival. That's the conclusion this morning. God will do his reviving work, but he calls us to prepare our hearts. Do we desire his quickening this morning? Yes, I hope we do because we need it. We do. Christian revival is not an emotional experience. Now, God gave us emotions. Sometimes the charismatic says, well, you know, we like the Baptists, but they don't have the Spirit of God. That's what they say. No, we don't have their false doctrines. That's what we don't have. Revival is not an emotional experience. We We have emotions. God has given them to us. But the right emotions will come when we experience His supernatural revival. The experience of not being ashamed. I'd I'd much rather have that experience than rolling around on the floor pretending to be a goat. Amen? Or a chicken. That is absolute heresy and wickedness and foolishness. No true joy from revival comes from the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, that I've confessed my sins and now I'm clean before the Lord. And Lord, you're going to give me strength over this trial because you've allowed it. And I understand how you use trials in my life because you tell me in the word of God that through this I'm going to come forth as gold. Lord, I can trust your grace for this day. We claim the promises of God. We are not ashamed before the Lord because of our unbelief. But we are revived and quickened according to the knowledge of God. And we are running in the way of his precepts according to his truth. Because he has shown us our need. And we have called upon him according to that need. Revival will come when we commit our ways to God. Revival is a choice. Revival is nothing less, listen carefully, than a new obedience to the word of God. That is the way 
a revival. Christian, are you down in the dust this morning? May I say as we close, God never meant us to be down in the dust and to stay there. Actually, if my memory serves me correctly, in Genesis chapter number 3, uh, God meant someone to be down in the dust and to eat the dust for the rest of his life. And that's the serpent. Christian, not you and I. He doesn't desire for you and I to be down in the dust. No, God has called us to higher ground with our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what He has called us to as believers. Amen? And so we need revival. And it will only come, as David knew, via the Word of God. Quicken me according to Thy Word. His Word reveals sin. That's what's in the way of revival. His word reveals our need so we can be brought out of our apathy. His word reveals the way of truth so we can recommit our ways to God. Do you want to be revived? What will you do with his word this week? That's my challenge. What will you do with his word this week? We all enjoy learning something new. Isn't that right? But be careful. Many people like to learn something new, even if they're not Christians. But few want to know how they can love the one who made them new. Yes. Amen. That's revival. Lord, show me who you are. Show me what I am. Quicken thou me according to thy word. That's a good prayer to pray. Amen. Let us take the word of God this week and allow him to reveal himself to us. And let us be willing to commit our ways to him according to this word, according to his word. And would you be willing this month, church family, to say, Lord, revive my love for thy word. Lord, you've shown me this morning what I've neglected. That's why I'm down in the dust. Lord, revive me. Quicken me. Help me to open up the word of God. Not because I have to. Not because it's part of my daily routine. Because I desire you. And I believe you have the power to change my life today through your word. Let's pray. Lord, we ask that you would help us like the psalmist of old. That you would enlarge our hearts. And you would help us to commit our ways to your ways. Help us to commit our lives to your truth. Help us to rise up in faith this morning, believing that we can run the Christian life when we run the way of thy commandments. So Lord, help us to take some steps this morning in making decisions for your glory. As the music...